Hi guys, so today I want to go through something that was just about yesterday it was announced that you know Alibaba got into some trouble with uh, Beijing China, right? And today I want to talk about what I feel about it and what my analysis thus far and what is Alibaba's fate going forward because I know many of you here may be Alibaba shareholders or you may have options on, on Alibaba. But before that, let me just quickly uh, thank everybody for your overwhelming response to the next level portfolio all right once again um for those of you who have already applied i appreciate your patience in the account opening right we already started investing for those who are open earlier all right but don't worry for every one of you those of you who are still interested please make sure to either uh, apply at my website investwithpete.co or even email me at pete tan py at philip.com.sg all right i'm gonna close this round of application by end of december so that's just gonna be a few days from here okay so let's talk about what happened for alibaba right so in short there's always been this practice of the pick one from two uh, uh syndrome in china what is that basically under this scheme uh, if you are a seller in china selling on e-commerce uh, you may be punished by other competitor if uh, you sell on both platform. For example, right, the major platform in China uh, are uh, Alibaba and JD. So if you are listed on Alibaba and you are listed on JD at the same time, and if Alibaba knows about it, he may punish you by blocking out um, traffic, all right, or totally removing your products offline from Alibaba. This is to really. Uh, force uh, merchants to just list on one platform instead of two okay and in november actually even before this recent saga november they actually uh this this administrative uh branch of china later i'll go through a bit more has already summoned all the 27 e-commerce group including alibaba jd meituan and pingdodo all right and to tell them to stop this practice so guys this practice has always been around and is not unique to alibaba okay all right so the thing is maybe this could be good for alibaba but i'm just a bit curious why does uh, the, the China central government placed so much attention on Alibaba. I think perhaps got to do with uh, what Jack Ma did previously, opening, rebuking the China policy, right? So this could be their way of punishing them. And, you know, there are some past example on how this pick one from two policy has worked out, right? For example, uh, Gallant's group uh, is the world largest Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, sorry, microwave uh, oven maker also filed a complaint uh, against Alibaba from diverting traffic from its product uh, that's listed on Alibaba's Tmall, right? And this dispute was settled actually last year uh, with them forming a strategic partnership, okay? So the thing is, you know, with this uh, pick one from two system or scheme, you know, if you're a smaller seller that don't have a lot of influence, then it's kind of like a take it or leave it kind of thing. And, you know, at the same time, because you're on one platform, maybe you'll be exposed to more fees, uh, less data and maybe other practices that can make you a less uh, a strong position, less competitive position. So the question is this, does it really affect Alibaba? So guys, whenever you hear any news out there about anything, uh, especially in investing, let's say in this case, Alibaba being investigated, or it could be another business that are having trouble, the key question you need to ask yourself is this, does it really affect Alibaba? Okay, so I pulled this out from a news article and they say, you know, the worst scenario for Alibaba would be restrictions on its business practices or maybe an attempt to break up the company. Okay, so to me, is you know, this is a stronger policy signal on the China government, right, to crack down on internet giants that are seemingly getting way more powerful and influential uh, compared to a few years ago, right, and, and this could really threatens the China uh, government in a certain way, all right, if they had to have it under control. And, you know, but the thing is this, the Chinese government has very little incentive to bring down these companies, okay, because um, companies like Alibaba, Tencent, Meituan, Pinduoduo, they contribute a lot to the economy and they really allow of small merchants to reach out to other consumers beyond just their state or their provinces. So there is 
real economic benefits in this company. So I think they just want to reach a balanced ground whereby these companies are really contributing to the economy without uh, threatening or, or affecting uh, the way the China uh, the Chinese government is being run, all right? how it's governing the population. Okay, so is it only Alibaba in this case? No, right? Uh, in fact, just a few days ago, the Chinese government actually summoned uh, all of them, right? All of them to actually further impose these nine must not, all right, uh, on their community buying services or a group buying. We call it tuan, uh, tuan bai, all right? They call it they're buying together. So, so the thing is, they really want to control them, not just on the Alibaba sector, but actually everybody. Okay, and uh, SAMR, like I mentioned earlier, is the State Administration for Market Regulation. So they are really involved in all the antitrust, monopoly, investigation. And, and on Tuesday, right, Tuesday, about three days ago, they mentioned that uh, they're going to have an administrative guidance meeting with six of the e-commerce giant to warn them to not continue any of the monopolistic uh, behaviors such as low pricing and even squeezing jobs. Okay, so... What are my thoughts? Okay, so my thoughts is that, you know, definitely this will be good for consumers in China and making China commerce becoming more competitive, right? But how does it affect Alibaba? So let me give you just three uh, possible scenarios in my opinion, okay? So I think one possible scenario is that China clamps down on Alibaba really hard and diminishes its market position, okay? That's one possibility. The second possibility is China restructuring Alibaba. That means, you know, turning it into a state-owned enterprise of sort, okay? Uh, something similar to what you see in China, perhaps uh, in the banking sector, in the telecommunication sector, all right? Where these are still listed companies, but actually they are not really privately run. They are kind of run uh, in lockstep with the government's policy, okay? And then scenario three is it could be, you know, still a very much independent Alibaba, but China removing the key personnel in there and making it a more compliant Alibaba. Now, in my view, and this is just my, my view, my speculation doesn't mean you should invest based on this. So please do your own due diligence is that I think scenario one and scenario three are the most plausible in this case. All right. I think scenario one, scenario three are the most plausible, but I still think in the going years, Alibaba will still be a main stay or a main company in China. Why is that? Because um, Alibaba still has many other business, right? Alibaba still has uh, uh, LME, which is a food delivery services, kind of like Grubhub and Uber, Uber Eats, right? Uh, it has a very big logistic company to support in its own e-commerce, which is called Cainiao, right? And of course, um, without, without um, uh, avoiding the topic of N Financials, where, where their IPO got scuttled, but N Financial is still a very big component of the Chinese economy in the fintech scene, right, with uh, Alipay. And last but not least, um, actually something that's not been talked about a lot, which is actually AliCloud. AliCloud is actually the largest uh, cloud provider in Asia. And at the same time, uh, based on some studies, it is actually the third largest, right, just behind uh, Amazon and Google Cloud. So the thing is, I, I don't think this clampdown is going to really uh, uh, diminish Alibaba that severely in the long run, simply because even with the e-commerce sector not being the main uh, revenue flow, which is kind of like Amazon, all right, think about it, they still have many other businesses to keep the, the whole Alibaba group. Uh, going forward, right? So these are just my thoughts. Um, but I just want to say that uh, for those of you who are invested in the next level uh, portfolio, this is not something that I would add into the next level portfolio, right? Because this is not disruptive enough. Perhaps maybe five years ago it will be, but right now it is not disruptive enough. At the same time, uh, once again, uh, you can look at the vulnerability of the government intervention in this business. So therefore, it is also not a bulletproof uh, business. Okay, so just to let everyone know, uh, Alibaba is not in the portfolio. Just want to say it very upfront there, and I do not have any um, intention of adding them despite the recent price drop. Maybe at a certain point, if the price drop is sufficient and significant enough, I will think about it. Okay, so once again, thank you everyone for watching this. And if you have any queries about the next level portfolio, please email me and also go to my website if you want like to apply for the next level portfolio. We're going to close this funding round. 
by the end of December, okay? So for all of you, if I don't see everyone, I uh, wish you a very good Christmas and a great New Year and I'll see you in 2021. See ya!